is Elisa and today I'm gonna to be sewing a beautiful summer dress with you. I've been sewing quite a bit recently, especially through all of these lockdowns that have been going on in the UK and we just came out of what seems to be the very last one, which we're all very excited for. Um, the weather is beautiful outside, so I thought why not make a summer dress. Uh, I'm gonna be working with this gorgeous um, black based viscose fabric. Um, the pattern is actually vintage and it's been digitalized by a company called Fabric Godmother. They have an online store and I believe that they ship throughout all of the UK, so go check them out if you're interested. The design of the dress is definitely inspired by all of those what are called milkmaid dresses that you can see all over Instagram and Pinterest right now. But mine does come with a twist, so if you're intrigued and you want to know what I ended up with, then please stay until the end. So the first thing that I usually do is I sit down with my iPad and have a look at the design that I have usually drawn out beforehand. I then have a think about all of the pattern pieces that I will need to cut out in order to be able to make the dress. In this case, the bodice of the dress consists of three simple panels. They are all a bit wider than they would usually have to be, because the plan is to shirt them. They will then be elastic so we don't have to add a zip or any other kind of opening in order to fit into the dress. I will also have to cut out a circle skirt or half circle skirt in order to meet the design that I have drawn out before, as well as an oversized sleeve pattern piece. Once I made sure all of my measurements are correct, I go ahead and cut out all of the pieces. Okay, so what have we got here? These are all of our cut out pattern pieces. We have from the top cut out sleeve pieces, which are a bit oversized because they're gonna be very puffy. Uh, then we have the three bodice pieces, which this is the back. And these are the two front pieces. They're all like super sized because they're gonna be shared or sheared. I don't quite know how to say that. Shearing. Um, so they're gonna be like super elastic. And the whole idea of the dress is that I'm not gonna have to add a zip or buttons or anything because it will all be shirt and with elastic so I can just jump into it because it's like um, it fits my body and it extends for me to to just jump in without a zip and then we have a I think this is a half circle skirt <laughs> I did this a bit freestyle um, the idea is that it's uh, the opening on top where your hips are uh, is a bit wider so I can um, you know slip into it from the top um, and it extends so I can fit in so the first thing I did was to overlock all of the raw edges of all of my cutout pieces and press them. And in here, I think the music is still at home. You know, we don't want to get any copyright infringement claims or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, so we pressed the sleeves um, with this um, nice border here, which we've done because we're going to uh, sew um, a nice straight stitch here now. And then we're going to put this um, rubber band um, in it. So it's going to gather all together and look really nice and cute. I need a black bobbin. I'm sorry for my messiness. I'm a very messy sewer. I don't actually, I live in a one bedroom flat in London and I don't have a dedicated sewing space, which is why I'm carrying those things around with me quite a lot. Uh, and they don't follow any particular structure or order. Have this tunnel here now which you can't see because it's black on black so I'm sorry about that but basically we have like two parallel stitches here where we are going to insert this black rubber band So this is pretty simple. Um, I'm sure there are better ways to do this, um, but that's how I'm gonna do it now. 
So I'll just um, put the safety pin through the rubber band without trying not to pinch myself. And then inserting it at one end into the tunnel that we've just created and then pulling it through. Okay, so now that we've threaded the rubber, the elastic through the tunnel we've created, this is what it looks like, quite nice. Maybe you can now imagine a bit better what my plan is for this uh, little sleeve. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put right sides together like so, and then we're going to sew down the side seam here, which is the inner seam of your sleeve just right here. And uh, to make sure it's all nice and neat, I'm gonna pin the two sides together just to make sure. Got the first sleeve all assembled and uh, turn it the right way around this is sort of what it looks like so you can see we have these cute little ruffles here with the elastic so this is our first sleeve I think it looks cute okay so what I've done now um, is I overlock the raw edges of the front piece, which is this. It's quite a bit wider than it would have to be, but because we're going to share it, I wanna make sure that I have uh, enough width um, so when it's actually pulled together by the elastic, I will still have space in it. Um, and it has you know, room to expand and to contract. So what I need to do now is I actually need to take some of this elastic sewing thread which i have quite a few packages here you're gonna need a lot of this if you want to share like you know big pieces of fabric so what i need to do is i need to hand um wind i think is the right term to use here to hand wind my bobbin um with this elastic thread and it's not like super tricky but there are a few things that you need to keep in mind so you have this elastic thread as you can see like it it's very elastic um, and then you have your your bobbin and um, what you need to do is uh, try to you know make it so that you hold the bobbin with the end of the thread in one hand and then you just start to wind the bobbin with your other hand and make it so that it's a tiny bit um, stretched but not too much because you want the machine to feed it nicely to your fabric so this is what you gotta do now this takes a few minutes and you're gonna do a lot of this as you progress with the shirring part see you later okay so i gave the shirring a first try and it looks pretty good um i don't know how much you can see here there are two seams now and uh, as you can see it's it's nicely pulled together but it also um, expands when you pull on it which is exactly what we want and the more parallel stitches we're going to do the more you're going to get that shirring effect and something that's important um, for you to keep in mind is when you start your seam don't um, lock it at the beginning at the end and at the end you need to keep it open so that when you're finished with your seam you can take the top thread and you can take the elastic bottom thread and then knot them together like so like this and then once again so your seams are closed off because if you're gonna do if you're doing this on the machine then you're probably gonna get like a jammed machine and this is not what you want so do it by hand and now we're gonna start shirring which is gonna be an hour long process so yay so this sort of happens when you're not careful and you're just sewing as quickly as you can and then you have to open one of these seams um and it's a real mess 
to seam rip them. And then you have this. gathered top piece that is going to be like about here and then I have um, the shirt piece which is going to be down here so now I have to figure out how to best connect these two pieces together so that they fit me and make sense so the way I figured I was going to do this is that I have my top piece and I have my bottom front bodice pieces and now I've created this um, tunnel which I'm going to use to put elastic in as well here um, and then I'm going to use this piece to connect the bottom part with the top part so we have uh, a ruffled elastic neckline then we have this beautifully draped bust piece and then we have another elastic part here below your bust followed by the shearing if you're not sure about how this is going to look i'm not either but i think it could be cool Now I need to sew together the front and the back piece and I'm thinking about also inserting a tunnel at the top of the back piece so I have more um, security and I just want to make sure that I can wear this dress for a very long time and I'm afraid that just the shirring thread is not going to be strong enough for all of the times that I will jump in and out of the dress and it's going to lose its elasticity. So. I might just about add another tunnel on top here. Okay, pretty cool. I actually am um, now almost finished the bodice. Um, I put the back and the front piece right tight sides together. I pinned them together and now I'm gonna sew the side seams. All right, so the top is put together. There's a bit of like excess fabric going on here which I will probably remove by just actually sewing the dart that I made here so it's not gonna be like coming out here and then this is the sleeve that we've already finished a while ago and it needs to be attached to the top and then here we have the skirt and um, hold on, like this on the left side there's gonna be a slit here that's it for today see you so 
now it's again a new day we're almost finished with the dress all of the different pieces are ready and finished and now they all need to be assembled so we've got the sort of like shoulder straps where the sleeves are gonna go in which we finished a while ago um, the bodice is finished as well and then we have the skirt which still which still needs to be attached um, to the top but I'm having an idea um, and probably I'm gonna follow it which is that I'm gonna keep the top and the skirt separated so I can actually wear them as two different and separate pieces but when I wear them together they look like a dress so I might actually just make another tunnel here on at the top end of the skirt and put a elastic waistband in so it's actually a skirt and i can wear it with a cool t-shirt and sneakers in summer as well if i want to or i wear it with this top and then it looks like a nice summer dress so i think that's what i'm gonna do right so now the first sleeve is sort of in i've not sewn it in yet i've just pinned it in its place and i'm gonna do the same thing on the other side now after I finished to pin and sew in the sleeves, I went ahead and finished off the skirt. I did that by simply adding an elastic waistband and overlocking all of the raw edges of the hemline. I then folded it once over and top stitched it down. And now to the final reveal. I really enjoy how this dress turned out and I think it actually looks really flattering on me if I may say so. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of this this summer and I'm looking forward to lots of picnics and minglings outside in the park. I think I nailed the milkmaid vibe quite well. Let me know what you think in the comments. I really hope you were able to enjoy this video and see you again soon!